So I'm going to give you your quizzes back, which were horrible, right? Um, I, I think the problem with us in this section of 6.6, the middle section of chapter 6, uh, I think the problem is that we forgot basic rules of exponents from Algebra 1, and we also forgot how to add and subtract and multiply fractions from fifth grade, right? <laughs> so let's review these basic skills in order to, to understand this section better. All right, so the class opener uh, number one uh, has x to the second times x to the third. That's rule one of exponents, right? When you're multiplying with the same base, do we actually multiply these exponents? You add them, so the answer is x to the fifth, piece of cake. All right, just keep that in mind. When you're multiplying two terms, with the same base, you're going to be adding exponents. What if you have a power to a power? That's, that's a rule of exponents. What happens there? Right there, you actually multiply. So that's x to the sixth. Okay. Um, number three, whenever you have a negative exponent, what are you supposed to do? Take it, move it to the other side of your fraction. What fraction? That's right. We don't have fractions. Put a division bar right below it. And when you move it down, there's going to be nothing left up on top. So there's nothing left up here. You put a 1 up there. And on the bottom, you now have x to the second. It's positive now that you moved it. So that's another rule of exponents that we need to know in order to succeed in this section. Again, rule 1, when you're multiplying with the same base, add those exponents. Rule 2, power to a power, multiply. Rule three, when you have a negative exponent, get the whole thing, move it to the other side of the exponent, it becomes positive. Now, all of these rules are going to apply on today's section. The only difference is instead of regular two and three, you're going to have fractions, right? So you might have something like a one-fifth and a three-fourths. So you're going to have to know how to add one-fifth and three-fourths in this section, right? So we know the rules. We also need to know how to be able to add and subtract fractions. Um, or likely uh, right here, 2 times 3 is 6. Same rules on today's section, but we're going to have rational exponents. We're going to have a fraction here and a fraction there. So you're going to have to know how to multiply like 1 fifth times 3 fourths. So let's review basic math with fractions. Number 4, in order for us to add two fractions, what do I need? Common denominator, right? It's way easier to multiply fractions than to add or subtract fractions. When you're adding or subtracting fractions, you need these denominators to be exactly the same. So what am I going to change it to? 20. 20. 20 down here on the first fraction, 20 down here on the second fraction. The question is, how do I change 5 into 20? Multiply it by 4. So you multiply the top by 4, you end up with the 4 up on top. You are adding these fractions. And over here, what do I do to this 4 to get 20? Multiply by 5. So multiply by 5, you get 15. Now that you have a common denominator of 20, you'll be able to simply add the 4 plus 15 and get what? 19. 19 over 20, and that's it. Of course, if you could reduce your fraction, reduce. But it's that easy. So again, you're not going to be asked straight up to add these fractions. But they will give you something like x to the 1 fourth times x to the 2 thirds. And you're going to have to add 1 fourth and 2 thirds. So you need to know how to add fractions in order to answer these uh, on this section. Likewise, you might have a power to a power, but instead of a 2 and a 3, you might have two fractions, which means you're going to have to know how to multiply fractions. Multiplying fractions is the easiest thing in the world. Let's go to number 5 right here. Um, you have two options. You could multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom, and you're going to get your answer 6 over 12, which reduces down to 1 half, right? But let's say you wanted a quicker route, actually. If you see a 3 up on top and a 3 on the bottom. Remember, if, if you have something on top, that's like saying something divided by something. And if it's the same exact value, you could just scratch them out. And likewise, the 2 and the 4, you could reduce by 2 and get 1, reduce the 4 by 2 and you get 2. So as you can see, you get the same answer, 1 half. It's all up to you whether you want to multiply top with top, bottom with bottom, and then reduce to get 1 half, or cancel first, which is technically reducing first, and then multiplying 1 times 1, you get 1. 2 times 1, you get 2. It's totally up to you. But you're going to have to know how to multiply fractions. You're even going to have to know how to multiply a regular number with a fraction. And that's really easy as well. You simply put that 6 over 1, 
And then you could multiply top with top, bottom with bottom, or you could cancel things out. I'm gonna cancel things out this time. The six up on top divided by the three on the bottom, six and three, you could reduce both by three. Six divided by three is two, three divided by three is one. So I now multiply the top two times that top two and I will get four, and then the bottom one times that bottom one and I'll get one, so that means that my final answer is just four. Do we understand these basic skills? Yes, all right, cool. So now that we understand those basic skills, we will be able to, first of all, correct the quiz, but we're also gonna be able to do page 426, and here's the homework assignment, 16 through 27, 30, 31, and 44 through 47, and 53 through 56, okay? So let's work on that. So let's jump right into it. Now, this first part is simply writing your expression from radical form to exponential form or vice versa, exp uh, exponential form to radical form. So this one is as an exponent, and we want it as a radical, as a root. So the top number is always going to be the power. The bottom number is always going to be the root. This is something that we need to know. Okay, So it's going to be the fifth root of eight to the one power. Eight to the one is unnecessary. You could just leave it as eight. That's the answer for number 16. Do we get it? All right, so just for funsies, let's do number 19 right here. So what have we been, what have we been doing this whole time? It's always a, a radical, a square root, or some type of root is gonna end up being a rational exponent, and a rational exponent ends up being a radical. What's a rational exponent? It's a fraction that's as an exponent. It's an exponent that's a fraction. The top number is a power, the bottom number is a root. So you could write this x to the third inside the square root and then make it to the third power, or you could use rule one of exponents, rule one, or not rule one, uh, rule two, that a power to a power, what do you do when you have a power to a power? Multiply. multiply. So if you put that three over one, you'd multiply three times three and one times two, and you'll get the answer x to the nine over two, nine halves, that's right. Now, it does say that they want us to write it as a radical. If it's an exponential form, radical form. So which one's the power, which one's the root? The root is the two, power is the nine. So what kind of root do we have? We have the square root. Now you don't have to put the square on the square root. You don't have to put the two in the square root. It's like putting a uh, one in front of an x. It's not necessary. But you could, if you want to, put the, the, the root right there. And if you ever do write a root, make sure you write it between this area and this area. So in this area is where you write it. If you put it out here, it's going to be mistaken as a power on whatever term you have out here. So square root, third root, all these, the roots go in here. And we have x to the ninth power on the inside, x to the ninth. Another way of writing this is the square root of x. And you could put to the ninth power on the outside. That power could be on the inside of the root or on the outside of the root. Now, if you're thinking, how the heck is that possible? Let me explain why, just by focusing in on x to the 9 halves. Isn't it true that I could take x to the 9 halves and write it as x to the 1 half to the power of 9? Isn't that true? Because 1 half times 9 is 9 halves, isn't it? Yes? So, you see, I could put the root of x with the ninth power on the outside, or I could also do it the other way, where I put x to the ninth on the inside to the power of one half on the outside, which would mean that the nine is inside the root. Either way is fine, because either way, when you multiply power to a power, you're gonna get that same value, nine halves. So again, it does not matter if you put that power of nine on the inside of the root or on the outside of the root with parentheses. It's totally up to you. So that's how you do that first section. We've done, uh, We've done rational exponents to radicals. Let's do one where we have a radical to a rational exponent. How about number 22? Let's do 22 together. Okay, now we should all know that any root, whether it's a square root, third root, fourth root, any root, when you have something that's being multiplied on the inside, you could split them all up. Okay, you could split them all up. So let's do that. Let's split it up. The third root of 5, the third root of x, and the third root of y squared. Well, that didn't really help us. Like if this would have been a 27, that would have been great because that would become three, right? 
Um, if it were 8, that would become 2. But this didn't really help us. Um, so let's convert it to a rational exponent, especially because that's the instructions to take this radical and convert it to a rational exponent. So what power is on the 5? A 1. So you're going to put the power over the root 3. So what do we really have? We have 5 to the 1 third. We have x to the 1 third. And we have y to the 2 thirds. And there's your answer. Another way of writing this answer is to take this whole thing and put it inside parentheses to the 1 half power. No, 1 third power. Sorry. But this is the way they write it behind the book, which makes sense. You're supposed to try to split that root and then simplify. You can't, so then you change it to a rational exponent on each one of them. Whoa, weird. Jumping to 24 through 27, which one would you like to see? 25. OK, 25. They want you to actually simplify it. You could simplify it by typing it straight into your calculator, 256 to the power of 1 fourth. However, it's easier to just think what number times itself four times, because this is really the fourth root. right? So if you want, think about this, the fourth root of 256. So what number times itself four times will give you 256? Now, if you just guess at it, if you say like 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's not 256. That's like 16 or something. Yeah, it is 16. Uh, if you go for 3, what's 3 times 3? 9 times 3, 27. 27 times 3, OK, that's definitely not 256. So if you go through it, 4. Uh, let's go 4 times 4, that's 16 times 4, 64, times 4, 256? Yes. 4 is the answer. Yeah, calculator will do it for you. What else? Um, let's do one of these. These are fun. 27. Any ideas? Move it to the bottom, right? OK. So if I take this whole thing and move it to the other side, I'm going to end up with nothing up on top over 81 to the positive 1 fourth power. And then what? Times 81 to the 3 fourths. Times 81 to the 3 fourths. OK, that, that's going to work if you multiply both top and bottom by 81 to the 3 fourths. But what, I mean, why not take a moment and think, what does the 1 fourth power actually mean? It really means the fourth root. So if we think about the fourth root of 81, just, just to think about this for a couple of moments before we start multiplying it to top and bottom by 81 to the 3 fourths before that, what's the fourth root of 81? 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3, that'll give you 81, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's your answer, 1 third. Isn't that crazy? Is that the only way to do it? Heck no, there's so many different ways of doing it. Like, look, let's just, let's just when you think of the number 81, what? What do you think of? Nine. nine. Well, now, specifically, nine squared, right? OK, so it, a, am I able to just take this 81 and rewrite it as a nine squared if I wanted to? Sure, why not? If you wanted to, go for it. So you really have 9 squared to the negative 1 fourth. So the only thing you did was change the 81 to 9 squared, and now you have that situation where you have a power to a power you have to multiply. So what is 2 times negative 1 fourth? What is 2 times negative 1 fourth? Negative 2 fourths, right? So you have 9 to the negative 2 fourths. Uh, but what is 9 to the negative 2 fourths, really, if you reduce? It's 9 to the negative 1 half. And you could take that, move it to the other side, and you'll have 1 over 9 to the 1 half. And what does 1 half, the power of 1 half really mean? The square root, right? So you really have 1 over the square root of 9, which is 1 over 3. Same answer, just done a different way. There's so many different ways of doing it. So you got to just brainstorm. And as long as you're doing something right, you're not doing it wrong. I know that, that sounds silly, but it's the truth. Um, jumping down, what happens when you're multiplying two terms with the same base? 
What happens when you're multiplying two terms at the same base? You add exponents. Now, we learned on the class opener, or we reviewed on the class opener, that in order for us to add 4 ninths plus 1 fourth, what do I need? Common denominator. So what's that common denominator going to be? 36, right? How could you change both of those denominators to 36? How could you change 9 to 36? Multiply by 4, we get 16 up here. We still have a plus sign. Multiply by 9. You end up with 9 over 36, which is the same thing as 1 fourth. Now we could actually add the numerators. 16 plus 9 is 25, and it is over the denominator 36, that common denominator. That's our answer to the exponent, right? So 4 ninths plus 1 fourth, that is 25 over 36. So the answer is A to the 25 over 36. If they asked you to write it as a radical, you would say the 36th root of a to the 25. So this is your answer right here, a to the 25 over 36 power, or to the power of 25 over 36. Um, these are a little fun also, those negative exponents, especially when you have a variable. Let's take a look at 33 right here. Uh, any negative exponent means you move it to the other side. So when I rewrite this, I need to take this whole thing, move it down underneath. There's nothing left up on top. And underneath, I will have y to the positive 4 fifths power. Now, I cannot leave a fifth root of y to the fourth on the bottom. So I need to multiply both top and bottom by y to the what power? 1 fifth, right? Rule 1 says when I'm multiplying two terms with the same base, I could add exponents. So what would I want right here? 4 fifths plus 1 fifth, that'll give me the 5 fifths. So I need a 1 fifth power right in there. y to the power of 1 fifth. So that's what we're multiplying both top and bottom by. The answer will be y to the 1 fifth up on top over y on the bottom. That's your answer in exponential form. If they wanted it in radical form, it would simply be the fifth root of y over, d over y. Fifth root of y over y. Let's move on. Uh, we also need to do 44 through 47. So pick one. We'll do one of each. Uh, 44, that's ridiculously easy. Uh, actually, 44 and 45 are both easy. Why? Because when you're multiplying with the same base, what do you do with the exponents? Add them. What's 7 plus 5? 12 over 4, right? So you really get a to the 12 fourths power. What's a to the 12 fourths? A to the 3. Done. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Uh, same thing for 45. Let's take a look at 46 or 47. Let's do 47 here. Power to a power you multiply. So what you really have is 3 fifths times 1 fourth. And negative times a negative equals a positive. So your answer will be what? 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 4 is 20. There's your answer y to the 3 20th power. Let's move on to the next page. We're doing 53 through 56. Pick one. 53? 54? 56? Let's look at 56 then, which is pretty easy. What could I do here? I could if I wanted to move this up, because whenever you have a negative on your exponent, you move it to the other side. Now you might be thinking, well, this doesn't have a negative. Why am I moving it up? I'm just saying you could move it up, and it'll become z to the 4 fifth times z to the now negative 1 half. So why would I move it up? Because now I'll have the same base being multiplied together. So what do I do with the exponents? If I moved it up, now I need to combine the 4 fifths with the negative half. So that problem now becomes uh, 4 fifths take away 1 half. So of course, I need a common denominator, which is 10. Multiply by 2, multiply by 2, you get 8 tenths instead of 4 fifths. It's the same fraction, minus times 5 times 5. 5 tenths, which is the same thing as 1 half. But now we have the common denominator. And 8 take away 5 is 3. So our final answer up on top will be z to the 3 tenths power. So there's your answer, z to the 3 tenths. 
again, I moved it up. I had to change that sign from a positive half to a negative half. Now I could multiply both terms with the same base, which means I have 4 fifths take away 1 half. There it is. I need a common denominator. My answer is 3 tenths. I didn't write that. I probably should have written that. My answer is 3 tenths. And that is the answer that's the exponent of the z's. So z to the 3 tenths is your final answer. Um, just for funsies, 53, I believe, is the most fun. I would, there's so many different ways of doing it, but I would move all the terms to one side, and then I would add and subtract all the exponents because they all have the same base f. So I would take this guy and move it down here, okay? So my new problem would be written like this. Up on top, there's nothing left. On the bottom, we have the 4. We have the times f to the 1 half. We have the f that I moved down to the positive 1 fourth. And we have the f to the negative 1 third. Now, yeah, I could have moved that up, but I'm keeping them all together. Why? So I could multiply this f times that f times that f, which really means I want to be adding 1 half plus 1 fourth minus 1 third. So if I do that problem on the side, 1 half plus 1 fourth minus 1 third and get a common denominator, I'll be able to combine all those different f's that I'm multiplying with that single uh, rational exponent. So in order for us to add these fractions, which are really powers, we need a common denominator. What's a common denominator of 2, 4, and 3? So if you have a 12 here, a 12 there, and a 12 there, just modify each fraction accordingly. Multiply this by 6. Uh, multiply this by 3. Multiply this by 4. And of course, we have a plus sign in the first one and a subtraction in the second. So when we add 6 plus 3, what do we get? 9. Nine. And then take away 4. So your final answer here is 5 twelfths. Now remember, this is an answer that's an exponent to the variable f, right? So what do we have so far? I want to write this over here on the side. We have the fraction with nothing up on top. We have the 4. I'm talking about this 4 right here. And then we have all the f's as 1 f now to the power of, we said, 5 twelfths. Now we're still not done yet because in the denominator, we have the twelfth root of f to the fifth power. So I need to multiply both top and bottom by something to get rid of that f to the 5 twelfths. What would I have to multiply both top and bottom by? f to the what? Think about it. I have 5 twelfths here. I need to add it with something else to make that 5 twelfths disappear. 7 twelfths. That's right. So let me erase the box and actually put a 7 twelfths right there. And both top and bottom by that 7 twelfths. So what's my answer going to be? F to the 7 twelfths power over the 4 that I have right here. And then a simple F. But because, of course, 5 twelfths plus 7 twelfths, that would give me 12 twelfths, which is 1. So f to the 1 is just f. Do we get it? Cool. So that's your final answer for that one. I've done about half of the homework problems. I need you to do the rest. But before uh, letting you loose, there was, I think, one other type of question on the quiz that you might be struggling with. That's when we had a fraction with the radical and the denominator. Give me any number you want, any number. Three. Give me uh, another number, the square root of seven. And give me another number. Five. Uh, you want a plus or a minus five? Plus. Plus five. Okay, so let's say I gave you this and I told you to simplify it. You do not want the square root in the denominator. So what do we multiply both top and bottom by? Negative square root of seven. By the conjugate. Conjugate. That's the same exact binomial, but with a sign change in the middle. Okay, so you multiply both top and bottom by that square root of 7 minus 5. So on top, it's real easy. 3 times square root of 7 is exactly that, 3 square root of 7. 3 times negative 5, that's negative 15. Now on the bottom, this is where it gets a little interesting. The square root of 7 times square root of 7 is just 7. The square root of 7 times negative 5, just rewrite it, but with the negative 5 first times square root of 7. And then positive 5 times square root of 7 is positive 5 times square root of 7. And positive 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. 
So I combine the middle terms, which are exact opposites. They disappear. 7 minus 25, that's negative 18, correct? So on the bottom, we have negative 18. That's my final answer for that type of question. That was on the quiz. If you're going to retake it, there's going to be another one of those on the retake. Okay. Uh, let's say you wanted to check your answers for this homework assignment and you don't have the book at home to check, all you got to do is pause on the appropriate spot on this video. So here are the answers. I'm just going to scroll through all the answers. You hit pause wherever you need to so you can check your answer on the video from home. 25, 26, 27. You have some of these right here. have 44, 45, 46, 47. And last but not least, 53, 54, 55, 56. All right, so correct your quiz. You get another 5% boost for the corrections. You can retake it whenever you want, but you got to make arrangements with me. All right, so we're not going to retake it as a class. Some people got 100%. That's great. A lot of people, and you know what? There is no max. So if you got a B and you want an A, retake it. If you get the A, I'll give you an A. All right, there's no max score this time of 79.9. I'll let you retake it. If you get an A, I'll give you an A.